Hey guys, Professor Slater here and I am ready for you today for another tutorial. So we're going to be basically talking about how to start building your dream home. So this is for all the dreamers, for all the future homeowners, as well as future engineers and architects because if I remember correctly, we weren't taught this in school. And of course, for the architecture fans. So let's get started. Now, a lot of you guys have been messaging me on Instagram, asking for construction tips, yung mga iba nakakaluoy, nakakaawa, <laughs> because you guys have been duped by contractors, you guys have experienced the bad side. I admit, there's some people out there na medyo mahirap sa ethics. Sabihin na lang natin ganyan. I'll guide you throughout the process so that you will avoid common pitfalls, you will know where to start and how to end, especially when you're about to sign that construction contract, which is the scariest part. So you start off with budgeting. As always, if you haven't seen the video, we posted a Q&A about this. It's basically teaching you what your budget should be. Now, second is you want to know how big because we were talking about per square meter. So one area, one little area. The size of the house that you want because it dictates the cost as well. You can have a very big house pero walang finish, so mura. You can have a small house for everything branded, everything expensive. So mahal, kailangan mo to i-balance. Do you want a two-bedroom house, a five-bedroom house with a service area and a kitchen na pang catering. It depends on you now. You have to be the one to decide. But everything starts with the architect. Before we begin about talking about architects, I'd like to give you a tip on how to pick an architect. So, ang architect para artist. So, meron tayong mga Picasso na mahilig sa abstract, meron tayong mga realism. Depende sa style nila. So, kailangan, before you even look for an architect, you look at the internet and scour the internet for a theme that you like. So, for example, dito sa Skypod, I'll share to you the whole conceptualization process of the Skypod. I submitted these pictures to our architect. Because alam ko na, na ito yung gusto ko. This is one. This is another. And naisip ko pa gusto ko ng indoor pool. So napag-isipan namin yan. Basing on this, I looked for an architect na pare-pareho yung style nila. Si LLG Architects yung napili ko, which was my cousin. So swerte on that end. But I really looked at their profile on the things that they do. So nakita ko, ah, pareho, sakto. Kasi hindi naman natin pwedeng tawagin yung architect na mahilig sa certain style and then sabihin natin, ay, gusto ko ng hindi mo style. Di ba ang hirap? It's just like asking an artist to do something that they are not accustomed to. Next is, ito yung kadalasan ng mga homeowners. Dito sila nahihirapan. And this is a tip when talking to your architect stick to one theme. Pare-pareho yung theme ng mga bahay. This can actually be just one house. And nakita nyo, Skypod actually kind of looks like this as well. So stick to one theme because you don't want na, ah, gusto ko ng Mediterranean. And then, yung wife mo, sasabihin ng wife, ay, gusto ko na parang French. And isa pa, gusto ko ng industrial. Nagmukhang fruit salad tuloy yung bahay. And the architect will have a hard time trying to incorporate all these things and help your architect out, find a theme and stick to it. So again, everything just starts with an architect. If you notice, I haven't mentioned anything about engineers, anything about contractors because everything starts with the architect. Now, you want to tell your architect, ito yung style na gusto ko and ito yung mga spaces na type ko. My suggestion ka ba din, architect? Basically, for us, we started off with, sabi ko sa architect, I want a house na ganito, where living area is all one floor. So sa akin yan, nanggaling. Gusto ko ng one floor, ayaw ko ng stairs. And then gusto ko yung service area separate from the house, which is what the architect designed for us. So 
Nung una, dinesign ng architect to have two parking areas. Two lang. So, parang may dalawa siyang parking area. This is not the plan of the SkyPod, guys. Pero, uh, just to give you an idea. So, dalawa lang. So, sabi ko, I want parking for five cars. Although, we have two cars. Pero, alam ko naman in the future when Scotty is older or pag may mga parents or visitors kami, at least may parking space sila. So, that's the reason why. So, they incorporated that. So, meron kaming service area and then meron kaming house and main house. And then I said, I wanted a pool inside the house. Inside talaga, just like the peg. So, we were working around with that concept and then ang lumabas is that magmukhang dangerous yung bahay kasi right beside your sala, merong pool and then pag tumatakbo yung mga anak mo, Hindi natin alam ano mangyari, di ba? So, we decided to fence off that area. And then, doon na-realize yung mga concept na, ah, parang may pool sa gitna ng bahay, pero naka-fence off siya with glass. So that when you're walking in the hallway, you can see the pool, and the pool is very part of your ambiance, etc. So, that is how we came up with the SkyPod concept. But, it wasn't all me. It was a back and forth between me and my architect. Ako yung nagsabi na gusto ko ganito kalaki yung master's bedroom. Gusto ko tatlong extra rooms. Gusto ko may bedroom. So, gusto ko may dirty kitchen, may clean kitchen. And gusto ni Chris na yung clean kitchen mapute. Just so you have an idea of how we conceptualize this and give you an idea of how you can do this for your home as well. You want to design a skypod because I gave um, from the side was just like this. Because this is the peg that I gave the architect. Meron kasing CR na nilagay dito. This is looking at it from the side. So ito yung CR na nadesign. So parang awkward ako kasi ayoko ng CR na high ceiling. Parang medyo weird. So, ang ginawa namin, so I talked to our architect, ginawa namin is to double height the ceiling or double height the tower. I don't know the proper architecture of them. So, may ganun siya. And then, may ganyan. It added to the design and it added us access to jealousy here so that may wind. And then yung CR, nag low ceiling na siya. And then, ito yung mga concrete na na pinadal na umabot dito na na wall yung feature wall natin yung board form walls so ito yung concept na first introduced to us by the architect and if you notice may mga konti pang changes na lumabas because of this ito pina extend namin because i wanted that wall to be a little bit more forward just so people from the outside cannot see what's going on here. And then itong pool sa actual was longer because I wanted it na kaya akong maglapse when I'm swimming. Part of picking an architect, pick an architect that is flexible, that is able to mold their desires to give you a beautiful home and your desires to have a livable home. Now, kung napansin nyo, when all that, that took a long time to explain, that was back and forth, back and forth for almost a year because I did not want to have change orders on site. So whenever you start construction, you realize that, Uy, gusto ko pala itong CR instead of here, ilagay dito. Gusto ko pala yung bedroom ko mas malaki. So these are things that if done on site while the construction is ongoing will be very 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 expensive. To yung mga complaints ng mga customers namin sa construction. Bakit ang mahal mo? I just wanted that CR to be moved a few feet here. Bakit yung change is is like 200 300,000. So I'll give you an idea guys. For example, ito yung bahay mo. And you have a CR here, CR. You want it to be changed to here, CR. You want to transfer there. Not only are you transferring this, but you're transferring all the faucets, all the water lines, all the drainage lines. So if may mga drainage systems dito, kailangan ilipat natin from here 
to hear, to the septic tank. So, maraming daming aspects to get little bits of changes accomplished. So, my suggestion is to be sure of everything. Dwell on every single scenario for the non-engineering people, non-architecture people. What you do is masking tape and floor and tape measure. So you lay out everything and you put furniture pa if gusto nyo to have a scale of the room. So for example, I have master's bedroom. Gawin ko na ganyan. And then masking tape ko pa yung size ng bed. Uh, if I have seats around the house or sofas around the house, I can put in. Lagay ko na dyan. The cheapest change kasi is when you change the drawing. The most expensive is when you change on site. Not only is it more expensive, it will cost you delays. So Skypod was built in 10 months, but the planning stage of that was, I think, around that much time as well. Tayo pa naman mga Pinoy, mahilig tayo sa manya na habit. Ah, doon na, na yun sa site. Doon na yun. Okay na yan. Okay na yan. And then pagdating, ay, change natin to. Ang lalabas sa project mo ay mahal and you will finish your house in two to three years instead of the usual one to one and a half year. If you notice guys, nasa architect pa rin tayo. So everything talaga is all coordinations with the architect. The architect, can also give you an estimate. Kasi alam nila, ah, yung design mo, ganito, ganyan, uh, puro glass or puro wood, mas mahal or whatever. They have an idea already of the costing per square meter, but that is not the actual cost pa. That will come later in the construction side when you're choosing your contractor. But before we choose our contractor, meron pa tayong gagawin. So the architect, beginin natin, Archie will now look for the proper engineers for structural. So ito yung mga questions nyo palagi. Anong difference ng engineer and architect? Architect is the design. Engineer is for the strength. So this is the structural engineer. Structural meaning the strength. Meaning kaya ba ng typhoon yung bahay mo? Kaya ba ng earthquake? Ito yung design niya so that you can feel safe when you're at home. Ito yung course ko. Then, meron pa tayong electrical engineer. Marami tong mga bagay na nakikita ko na, ah, wala, drawing-drawing lang yan ng mga pipes and stuff and mga electrical wirings and dito yung mga outlets. Hindi na natin kailangan ng electrical engineer. Papasign na lang natin yan after, after the fact. Please don't do that. Not only hire proper electrical engineers, but also proper plumbers. Plumber. Plumber. And then, kung malaki yung bahay mo, meron ka pang mechanical, tawag nila. And if you're building a, sabihin natin, commercial establishment, meron pa yung fire protection. So, ang itong trades, this one, this one, this one, this one, is what you call an MEPF trade. If you see that in the future, MEPF, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection. So what is mechanical? Mechanical is mga aircons. So mga piping sa mga aircons, well, especially ngayon, hindi na uso yung mga window type. So we hire mechanical engineers to see where these pipes go, kung may mga ducting yung mga bahay mo. These trades are going to be signed by their proper engineers. Kailangan assign mo and hire the right professional so that hindi random or mali-mali yung mga electrical things in your home. And after that, stressful, no? Ang dami, daming kailangan bantayan. And after that, you have to check it yourself because you want to know where your outlets are, if it's in the right place, and the switches. So this is something I print out and then I'll check. Okay, gusto ko pagpasok ko dito, gusto ko kaya ko na tong switches of these areas for the outlets. Gusto ko maraming outlets and in the right location so I can just plug anywhere. That is the whole planning cycle and please take your time and invest in this because this is what will save you time and money and headache in the future. Now it's time to look for your contractor, which is for most people, the most scary and confusing part because maraming mga contractors na 
design and build, meaning they also design your house and build your house. Uh, I'll talk about this later. And may mga contractors na labor only, may contractors na sakto na, buo na yung contract and I'll do it for you. Or may contractors na item by item talaga. Design and build, I'll personally say, don't go there unless you trust the contractor. Now, design and build contractors don't hate me. My father is a design and build contractor. So these people are usually popular due to word of mouth. Kasi nakikita na yung, yung reputation. But if you're doing a design and build with someone you don't trust or you don't know, mahirap because may balance yun eh. The contractor will build, but the architect will be the one to check. The architect will be the one to say, uh, hindi straight yung walls mo. Um, hindi pulido yung pagkatrabaho. Ah, yung structural engineer will be the one to say, hey, mali yung bakal, but hindi to tama yung bakal na yung pinawa, or nilagay. If design and build, you have to put all your trust that they will do the right job sila mismo without having inspectors. That's most of it. So, if you want to go that route, kasi less headache, you don't have to look for a lot of suppliers, Make sure you trust that contractor or the person you're working with. Next is a labor only. A lot of people think they can save if they just hire a foreman and do labor only, or even a contractor and do labor only because ah, ako na bibili na material so that hindi mo na papatong yung materials, guys. I'll tell you, as much as possible, if you don't have a know-how, don't go there, because what will happen is that. For example, ako, gawin, kong, gawin mo akong labor only. I wouldn't care how much cement I put there. I wouldn't care if I waste any of your paint that you've given me. Meron pa nga incident where I've heard na may kickback yung engineer sa side. Meron siyang five pesos for a can of paint. So, ang ginagawa niya is that when paint arrives, pinatapon lang niya. Pinatapon. Five pesos every time pinatapon niya. Don't go there. Make sure close contract kayo with your contractor. And you have to keep track of all the suppliers. You have to keep track of all the orders. So, sobrang sakit talaga sa ulo. It's not worth your time and your headache. And you'll probably be spending more in the long run. Then you have the, I forgot the proper term, but yung tipong buo na yun, yung labor and materials contract. So what we usually do with labor and materials contract is completo lahat except for the tiles and the finishes. Meaning, ako yung pipili ng mga tiles na gagamitin ko sa walls because, syempre, hindi naman alam natin kung anong quality ang ginag ginagamit, di ba? So installation is theirs, yung pagpagdikit, yung adhesive is theirs, but yung mga bathtub, mga toilets, ako na pipili. Ako na mag-spend para alam ko na quality yung Nilalagay. Kasi ako mismo ang bumili, di ba? But these are small items already. These are finishing stages items that you can buy yourself. Guys, inom muna ako ng tubig. Wala na akong laway. Sorry for a very talky video, but ang ambition ko lang talaga is to demystify this construction process and to guide future homeowners or people doing even small projects in their home. At least alam nila yung mga common pitfalls. Kasi... Marami akong mga kaibigan na may mga nightmare and horror stories when it comes to doing projects in their home. Nakakaawa talaga when they experience these things. Ang ganda kasi for us, when we deal with contractors that are bad, I know that, oy, mali itong ginawa mo, hindi kita babayaran or whatever. So, just to give you an example, meron kami yung contractor na hindi kami happy with their work. And sabi ko, this is a very bad stone job, marble, marble yun. Pag-connect ng dalawang marble, sobrang pangit, nakikita mo yung adhesive. And then I told him, pare, malito. This isn't how it should be. And then we're paying you premium kasi high-end ang sinabi mo. Bakit hindi pulido as, as if tao yung gumawa, hindi machine, naka wavy, kita pa yung adhesive. Sabi niya sa akin, straight to my face, guys. And this is where most of you get ilan or get loco. Yes, dude. When they say, ganyan naman talaga yun eh. 
Sabi ko, no, that's not how it's supposed to be. I know what it's supposed to be. Sinabi pa niya sa akin. And then Google it, show it to me. Sabi niya. Oh, ginugol ko. Sin- I showed it to him. And then, sabi ko, I won't accept this. Please take it back. I won't pay you. So what happened is that, sabi niya, please take it na lang. Please I'll accept that quality. We'll give you 50% off. Or for that price, sabi ko, okay, good. I'll get it. Kasi hindi na kaya repair So even high-end suppliers tend to do shortcuts or even sometimes, sometimes there's suppliers that they themselves don't even know how it should be. So okay, balik tayo sa construction. Now that you've chosen the right contractor, whether you chose to go design and build, if you trust the person, labor only, I told you not to do that, but okay. <laughs> or the proper, I don't know the, ano, but it's a whole project contract that is itemized and everything. That's the way I suggest you go. First thing, know that everything is written down. All the items there are there. Pag sinabing kasama ba yung fence, kasama ba yung aircon, kasama ba yun, hindi. Nakalagay dyan, included, not included, and it's highlighted. So everything, as much as you can think of, study that contract. Look around your house kung anong meron, anong wala. May, may lights, kasama daw yung lights. Pag nilagay, rough in, meaning wala pa yung lighting fixtures. It's just lighting, rough in, meaning the, the pipes, the, the wires, but hindi pa kasama. When you're uncertain, ask. Plumbing rough in is the same, kasama yung pipes, pero hindi pa kasama yung fixtures. So when you have that and it's complete, you make a contractor guarantee that everything is included. May parang ang sinasabi nila that, that the whole house is a deliverable. When they say, ay, nakalimutan ko, and this has happened, nakalimutan ko yung stairs, nakalimutan ko ilagay sa estimate ko, wala na, kasama na yan because we've already closed the contract and this is part of the whole house na. And all the not included are already written down. So, supposedly, kasama na yan because that's the essential part of the house. Pag, pag sinabi nilang, hindi kasama yung second floor, nakalimutan ko i-estimate. Wala na yun. Dapat kasama na yun. Argue to the death if hindi nila isama. Last na to guys. Hanggang dito lang tayo for now. Hanggang closing of the construction contract lang tayo. So, ano ba yung payment terms? Ano yung dapat na payment terms? Meron tayong tinatawag na progress billing and this is the ideal one. You want to start with around 20 to 30% down payment and you bill based on progress. You pay based on progress. Meaning, pag nakita mo more or less, ganito na siya. And, pa, sinabi ko, itemized. Sabi nila, okay, completed na to, completed na to, completed na to. Yung percentage of what they have completed is what they bill. Yung amount of what they have completed versus the total amount is what they bill you. In short, they bill you per progress less 10%. The retention. So you don't pay the whole amount. You keep 10%. This is a typical contract. You keep 10% until about a month of turnover. Because alam naman natin na pag pasok natin, mapapansin natin yan. Uy, this light is not working. Uy, this water is not working. So they repair it. And pagkatapos nilang i-repair, and after a month of that, you give the retention. Now, don't be madamot with your retention. Kami contractors, guys, we parang paminsan na feel namin ginagawa na kaming repair person. So, meron kayong punch list that you agree upon na ito yung gagawin, ito yung mga kulang, ito yung mga what is needed yet. And after this, wala na. Ibayad mo na yun. Kasi paminsan, okay, punch list tayo. Gawa tayo ng what you want us to do to turn over as a contractor, what you want a contractor to do so that you will pay me my 10%. Okay, pagay natin. Okay, so you are not working. May scratch dito, please repair. Merong mga customers na even after that punch list, oy, may bagong gasgas dito, pakirepair naman dyan, oh. Oy, may bagong 
bent dito or may nakita ako pang mga ano para sinasadya na nila so that they don't pay the 10%. So guys, don't do that. Pay your contractors well so that at least naman fair tayo with the relationships that win-win. But that is essentially the 10% is for your protection so that hindi mo babayaran until you are completely happy with the house. Woo! Madugo, no? So, yeah, if you're building a house by yourself, medyo madugo talaga. And yes, you may spend a little bit less than if you were to buy a ready-made house, but there's pros and cons as well. So maybe in the future, mag-usap tayo, is it better to build a house or buy a house? That's for something in the future. But for now, guys, this has been a very long video, a very talky video. I hope you like it. If you like it, if you like this type of video, please let me know so that I'll do more. If you don't like it, let me know also in the comments down below. But please, if you feel I have given you any value, subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next one.